Hello, everyone. Welcome to week seven of Roleplay West Marches. It's as if I knew that seconds before the show started. Uh, has everyone here met everyone? I think I think Zoe and Co. you guys have not met. That's correct. Co's a weird guy with a beard and he shaved his head for some reason. And Zoe got a haircut. Hi, Zoe. So you guys both have something to talk about. Meet each other. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's all I got to do. Uh, Steven, let's play the game. All right. No. <laughs> Uh, we should find out what everyone's been up to. Steven, we talked to you recently. Adam, I guess, have you guys done anything interesting in the past four or five days? Noteworthy? I played a shit ton of Darkest Dungeon. Yeah! Yeah. God, yeah. I think. I just, like. A lot of I, people have been doing that. Yeah, I just feel like somehow, like, while I was sleeping several years ago, the developers of that game came into my room and sawed my head open and took out my aesthetic and made it into a game because it's perfect. Like, I don't, you're still alive, that didn't happen. Yeah. Well, I mean, I got some stuff left over. It's fine. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's. I love it. It's a really good game. You want to know the secret to Darkest Dungeon? I would love to hear this. Hellions. Three Hellions and one Vestal, and you'll beat yeah. the game. Yeah. Yeah. You'll beat the game. <laughs> That's all you gotta do. Just been playing that. That's all you've been doing. Pretty much. I saw you were playing D and D last night. What? Was that yeah. your? You had like twenty people in the room. What the hell was that? Yeah, that's my. Do you have a my... mini convention in your room? It's my IRL game. No, we we have twelve players in that game. What the I, fuck? How long? I'm, hard I'm hardcore. Do you I'm, throw like thirty goblins at them? How does the human GM? Uh, what did they fight last time? They fought uh, nine ghasts and holy shit. Uh, there was like a fight where we did like twenty six bat giant bats. I think mm -hmm. the fights are either like a ton of monsters or like in one insanely powerful monster. Are they like running a town together? Like how? Yeah. How do he? They, yeah, uh, yeah. That's it? That's what they're they, doing? They pretty much rolled into Phandalin and then was just like, okay, we were on this joint, and then they're just going around to dungeons and clearing them out. Interesting. Yeah, Throwing bodies at the problem. Yeah. How long do Actually, fights take? Uh, it depends. Like, we've had, like, two-hour fights before, but those are, like, big set-piece ones. Um, yeah, the game is not designed for this many players. Like, you can't scale it up. Yeah. Like this, and you have to do a bunch of weird stuff to make it work. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. We should run a twenty man. I don't think we couldn't even do intros for that. It would take too <laughs> long. That'd be the four hours. Yeah. That would be cool though. Ideas yeah. are spinning. Uh anyways. Steven, you run a twenty man game recently? What have you been up I to? have <laughs> not run any twenty man games recently, JP. I haven't I haven't run any games in real life recently, actually. I've been trying to get into the rhythm of working out in the mornings and going to bed early enough to get up to work out in the mornings, and it's impossible. Oh my god! Getting up early is a motherfucker, man. It's it's the worst. Because then I'm you gotta go to sleep early. Yes, I'm gonna start doing some some tricky stuff. So like, in the past, when I wanted to really wake up with my alarm, I would, I would sort of like close my eyes in the afternoon and set an alarm for like five minutes and then as soon as the alarm went off I would wake up get up and like feel really awake just by virtue of not having fallen asleep or whatever and I would do that a couple of times and then the next morning I would hear the alarm and it would like it would trigger that same process in my brain and I'd be able to wake up and get up and get going very easily so I'm gonna start doing that and just start just progressively setting my alarm earlier every day oh it's it's hard it's fucked up man Yep. Speaking of someone that gets up early for no reason at all, because you don't have to, Co, what the fuck do you do to get up so early? You wake up at like 7 a.m. every morning. What? Yeah, just about for the last 470 plus days. Yeah. Why? I uh, gotta keep the streak up, man. Yeah, I but you can you can stream. There's 24 hours in the day, and you choose 7 a.m. Oh, it's a good time slot, man. I got it locked down. Yeah, there's not <laughs> many streamers. All, all about that positioning, man. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like Saturday morning weekends. cartoons, except it's weekday morning cartoons. Yeah, there you go. There I you hit go. those. I hit those early morning EST office workers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Out of the alt tabbers. Yep, the alt tabbers exactly. Uh, Co, it's been a while since. Well, you were. You, when was the last time you were on West Marches? We haven't played for like a month or something like that. But it was Zeke with with my ill-fated brother. Oh, that's right. That's right. Zeke died. Way to go, Zeke. I don't. I still don't know why you did that. But, you just uh, ran out of the building. Yeah. We thank you for the extra XP for sacrificing yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, anything of note uh, recently, Coke? I saw you got a crazy PC yesterday. I did. I did. I did. A, I have an unboxing on my YouTube right now. It was a pretty phenomenal uh, present from Intel. It was really cool. And uh, besides that, just a lot of Darkest Dungeon 
H one Z one and Darkest Dungeon Man. I I, I have think not that reached man, that I'm while. that might be my. It's only February, but I think that might be like <laughs> contender for game of the year. It's, it's really good. It's so good. I admire it so much. I haven't spent a, that much time with the game in like months. So, so I've I've mentioned it on Twitter, but there's a role playing game called Torchbearer that's pretty much the tabletop version of Darkest Dungeon. I don't want to so play that. If you like Darkest Dungeon, like it's so good. I know it. I actually have the the book somewhere over on that desk of clutter. But yeah, I think Where yeah. Is it? Oh, a it's red. not at hand. Uh oh, you fucked yeah. up, Stephen. This was your time. Oh, here it is. <laughs> oh shit. Aha! My time is back. Oh, I don't. What? Is, oh, I have Burning Wheel. Aren't they related? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Burning yeah. Wheel is the is the like more complicated like Game of Thronesy sort of version of the system. Torchbearer is very much just go into the dungeon, suffer, try to get out of the dungeon, <laughs> and repeat. Gotcha. Yep. Uh, so, R&D, you know, yeah. We could do that. We already have a game picked out, but we could do that down the line. Mm -hmm. We need to fucking, I gotta find. Yeah, we gotta get it. I've been too we busy, get it man. done. We, we were gonna do, uh, to, I guess, like, peek behind the curtain for everyone else. We were gonna do another episode of Solemn Tonight, but I didn't want to do 20 hours of role-playing in, like, four days. Oof. So I was just like, nope, <laughs> we're not doing that. <laughs> we're not throwing another show in there. I can't do it. I need, I need to watch something that's not role-playing related. So, so, yeah. Uh, last but not least, Zoe with the new haircut. Is that a Cthulhu shirt? Uh, yes, he's fighting Godzilla. Nice. Because that's why a the fucking fuck wicked he? shirt. I know, I know. That's what I thought when I bought it. Did you it. draw that? No, unfortunately not. Okay, I, I wish so. Yeah. What have you been up it's, to? It looks like something I would be drawing. Uh, I've been drawing a lot lately. Uh, started stream that drawing stuff again whenever I had time. Got a new haircut, uh, and then I've been busy uh, to fight the internet for three days to defend my new haircut. Nice. So apparently, that's, it's not cool for a woman to have, a, have short hair, as, nice. as far as the internet goes. You should just get a mohawk like Co and grow a beard. Yeah, I think that's the next step. I mean, how much more angry can they possibly get, right? There's actually a lot of beards on this show. You're going to get peer pressured into growing one, I think. I, I, I was actually trying. I knew what I was getting into once he announced it. and It's a bit patchy, though. I just can't seem to. Next time, I just draw it on, I think. Yep. Well, you know, I read a study yesterday, thanks to Reddit in the top 10. If you have a patchy beard, you're not going to go bald. If you have a full one, you will go bald. Yep, so, I'm fucked. Really? We're all fucked. Yeah, yeah we're all going bald, guys. <laughs> I'm I'm already yeah it's already happening I'm not even thirty yet so we're all fucked. Like if I have to choose between having a sweet beard and having hair on my head, I'm going with the beard. Every Eventually, I'm just gonna so shave it. Yeah. 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 You can wear a cool wizard hat on your head and still have a red beard. Problem yeah. solved. Yeah. Yep, that's true. That's just where the game from. Off. That's where it came. That's from. how it works. That's true. <laughs> that's true. Uh, well, cool. I think Co. When speaking into the game, that's the intro for everyone that just skipped ahead eleven minutes. Uh, Co, you need to roll for some HP. Right? Yeah. I think so, yep. Ooh, oh, you look, you you look bewildered when I said that. On YouTube, it's a thing. Uh, someone <laughs> will always post the link to when they actually start playing the game. Yeah. <laughs> and it varies. It's usually in, like, the teens. We did in 11 minutes, so that was a rather quick intro. We had one well, go, like... like we did one like, like you let Jeff talk for 45 minutes this yeah, time. Yeah, we so. went we went one for like 33 minutes or something, and people got real pissed. So we did the interview <laughs> about the uh, uh, the Super Bowl. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. All right, are you rolling for HP? Do you know what to do, Co? Have you been prompted here? I have no idea. No, Steven, I've prompt so, the man. Co, <laughs> I need you to roll 1d8 and add your Constitution modifier. Co, aka Sheldrick. Wow, that's rough. Sheldrick. Okay, so you gain four hit points. And you also gain cunning action. So make a note at second level, your quick thinking and agility allow you to move and act quickly. You can take a bonus action on each of your turns in combat. This action can only be used to take the dash, disengage, or hide action. You can do it every round, right? Yep. Every round. So like, Co, can, it's actually OP because you can like attack and then disengage and just yep, fucking and you'll never get attacked. Away. You can yeah. even like Sounds move great. up to them like ten feet, stab them, and then disengage and then move back ten feet because you can divide your movement over the course of your round. It's awesome. Yep. Um, yeah, the the dodge, duck, dip, dive, or dodge actions. <laughs> uh, so action. on that quick reference sheet, which I've shared with you all, so let me just pop that up for you guys real quick. 
the the actions are uh, third block down on the left hand side of that sheet. So dash, you move twice your speed after your modifications for the total of your turn. Disengage, your movement doesn't provoke your attacks of opportunity for the rest of the turn. Dodge, uh, they have disadvantage versus attacking you. Yeah. There you go. Oh no, it's uh, sorry, it's only dash, disengage, or hide. You don't get dodge. Bummer. Um, so yeah, cool. Uh, there was someone else who leveled up, I think. Yeah, did I roll for HP last? I don't no. Know. I didn't? I mean, what what's your HP right now? Uh, I, you know, I gotta, hold on. I gotta <laughs> Make sure you pull up the right player character, JP. What is this shit? I don't know. I have too many fucking characters. What is this? Nope, that's not it. Like, Kirk, you know. That's Jasper. Ah, uh, there we go. Swan Song. We are, uh, we're to, in today's Shane. session, you'll be playing Higgs. <laughs> we just Turn need to, like, uh, random Got shuffle. It. Uh, yeah, it's the Super Smash Bros. of roleplay. Are yeah. you sure? I thought I, I have 27 HP in this. I have to have rolled Okay, yeah, you definitely have rolled. Yeah, because so I have D8 max. Yeah, you can't hit 27 on 2D8 plus your constitution modifier. So yeah, yeah. you yeah. must have rolled. But, uh, you know, like, getting into game, you guys are all in Vera Scully, and it's been... Uh, fuck, how many days it, has it been? Let me see. I've actually now created a, a spreadsheet tracking adventurers who are going out. It's the 18th of June, and the weather today is, I think it's pretty thunderstormy. Uh, where the hell did I put that stuff? Oh, organization. Not a thing that I'm a fan of. Found it. Yeah, so uh, yesterday there was like thunderclouds, and today... Uh, no, two days ago, thunder clouds. Yesterday, partly cloudy. Today, it's like thunder showers. So, like there are clouds sort of tearing across the sky, and every once in a while, the heavens just open up and unleash hell. Um, it it's been a very wet early summer so far in the West Marshes. Um, but specifically, Kurthak, how do you advance your training? Like you've you've now selected a monastic tradition. Oh, it's it's June eighteenth. Monastic is that a thing? Did you just yeah. make that up? Yeah, no, that's, that's a word. A thing. What the monastic? Fuck? As referred uh, to monks. Fucking, what'd you get on your SATs? <laughs> it's way too good. Uh, it's been three days since you last returned to town from the uh, adventure of the cockatrice knight, and um, I think you've probably spent the last three days kind of either in meditation or in training. Like, how did you ascend to the next level of your monkish abilities? And do you know which monastic tradition you wanted to choose? Uh, I don't know what monastic tradition I wanted to use. <laughs> um, okay. But I would say that I just kept my... Uh, I just stayed around Juliet a lot, and I was tempted... Not tempted, but uh, my... What's the best way? Give me a fuck another SAT word. My, You're gonna have to give us context. Salubrious. I don't even. That you just threw a word at me. Not, it doesn't actually hey, fit. That's what you asked. It doesn't actually fit what I'm trying to say here. Rob Uh My mental fortitude was tested by being around a pregnant woman all day. Yes, absolutely. Boom. That's like you a. Up. That's like a 600. Shitty SAT score. Anyways, well, plus, we've got maggot face babies or baby well, plus face we, maggots. We've got that. We've got that wagon now, so you could just be all like, wax on, wax off. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, we have that wagon. Now it's the shiniest, shiniest wagon yep. the whole town has ever seen. It's, the wood is like an eighth of an inch thick now because it's been. <laughs> it's like yep. evenly waxed down. <laughs> yep. So JP. You've got three monastic traditions, and you can sort of have meditated your way into any of them. Okay. There's the way of the open hand, which is all about martial arts and manipulating your enemy's key while harnessing your own. So the first thing that you get is open hand technique. So when you hit a creature with one of the attacks granted by your flurry of blows, you can impose one of the following effects. You can knock it down, uh, you can push it 15 feet away, or you can prevent it from taking reactions. Or you could go into the way of shadow, which lets you basically like wrap yourself in shadow and pass without being detected. Or you can go into the way of the four elements, which basically lets you manipulate earth, air, fire, and water for dramatic effect. Okay. Uh, so like one of the one of the could, first things. You can is basically like, be a ninja, the Karate Kid, or Avatar: The Last yep, Airbender. Exactly. Which one you want to be? <laughs> okay. I'll uh, I'll look it over here in the player's handbook while we're doing the intro before we get into any fights. Okay, cool. 
Uh, so, yeah, you guys are hanging out in Frelka's Tavern, uh, as usual, and uh, I think it was Shaldric who actually assembled you guys this time. So, Shaldric, do you want to just introduce your thoughts on what you guys should be heading for? Absolutely. So, first of all, it's a pleasure seeing you on today. It has been brought to my attention that there may be some way to speak to undead in a nearby village. I'm very interested in pursuing this and seeing if by chance I can acquire this power. Uh, yeah, so the specific rumor that you've heard, Sheldrick, is... Let me pull that up. Um, legend speaks of a shrine to Rasta, the Lord of Fall, where one may communicate with the deceased deep in the Harlud Barrows south of town. So you, do you tell us we're going to a nearby town or we're going to a barrow? What do you say? That's, oh, that's, that's the rumor town. you've heard. Oh, yeah. I've heard it's nearby. I'm kind of just like, I've got my arms crossed. I don't seem too confident about this. I'm looking at the rest of the party to see how they feel. So it's it's all like rainy and stuff, like rainy and thundery outside? Mm-hmm. All ominous. You're probably, okay. like, it's... it's it's kind of like uncomfortably warm in in yeah. Falcus Tavern. He's got like a couple like above ground windows open, and those are like eight feet up because the tavern's set into the earth. Um, and you know, you can every once in a while you hear thunder rolling across the plains. Cool. It's it's kind of dim inside. It's gray outside. I'm uh, yeah, I'm sitting over by the fire playing my like bell. Like I'm probably playing like the Tristram theme from Diablo on it to make it yeah. extra creepy <laughs> in here. Um. And uh, yeah, like I stop to like tune the strings and like look over. So you're you're a you're a dwarf, right, Shelter? That's your jam. I, we, haven't, we haven't met before, I, I don't think. I kind of look down to my feet and I say, "Well, it, it does appear that way." Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, that that was that was just out of character. I'm just making sure. Um, okay. Uh, so I'm gonna look at uh, Karthak and and be like, uh, Karthak, have you been to these barrows before? Uh, my eyes kind of like get tighter and tighter as I'm staring at you, almost as if I'm like staring down at you, and like staring, and I kind of let out a grunt, uh, and I just look back over towards uh, is it Verani? Fuck, let me look. Yeah, Verani. Verani. I look at Verani, and I'm just like, are you interested in this? The Barrows. Well, I'll be looking at you, kind of snarling, kind of smiling. And, uh, you can't well, tell the difference. Yeah, hard to tell. No, it's just it's, uh, I'm a lizard. What can I do? Okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm just gonna look at you like, well, Kirithak, I would be interested in going there with a group which consists of people who are actually willing to take a fight and not run back home to their wives right away and being all worried. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. Uh, I kind of I keep my eyes crossed. I don't really say anything. I look I look back over towards uh, Shaldrick. I just I just shake my head. I'm just like, we'll journey again soon, friend. I gotta go. I just stand <laughs> up and leave the bar. Okay, <laughs> good. So uh, where are you heading? Uh, I just okay. go back to Juliet. Okay. Yeah. Call she's it. like she's <laughs> like, what are you doing back here? <laughs> Uh, just like Julie, I'm not. They wanted to go back to the barrows, and I'm not going back today. Karthak, you said you were gonna get me some money for the baby. We'll get that. We got. <laughs> I got you a lot, Juliet. Love geez. that vocal fry. We need more, Karthak. Okay, well I'll oh fig I'll God. get it done. I'll Wizard figure something figure. out. Don't go to those barrows. I know. I'm not going to. That's what I just told you. Do you not hear you. me? They. They. Everybody goes there who dies. I know. I went there and saw... Wait. So, pe people died. That's where Gilly apparently died. I still haven't seen the body, though. You no. know Gilly? You know I told you about him? Uh, Her? I, I don't remember that name. I just shake my head and, like, sit down. That's not important! <laughs> <laughs> so what are, the, what are the others of you doing? Uh, well, I want to talk to Sheldrick. So I'm going to... I'll put my bell like it down. I'll come over to the table and order a round of drinks for the table. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll sit down. Because I guess the two of you, like Ronnie, you and Shadrick, are sitting at the table already. Sure. Okay. As far cool. as I fit. I'm, I'm kind of standing over it, because I was just trying to talk to the table before we were someone rudely walked out on us. 
Okay, I'm probably still like a good like couple of feet taller than you sitting down. Like if you're standing, because I'm huge. I'm like really really tall. Um, but we look similar otherwise. Maybe you're like a smaller version of me. <laughs> um, and uh, I actually looked at our fan art. The pictures are pretty close. Nice. So uh, yeah, I sit down, and uh, and I'm like, uh, so, Sheldrick, you want to go to the Barrows? Why? Well. My reasons are my own, of course, and I kind of, you know, glance away. But the point is that the power to talk to the dead could lead to all sorts of goals being achieved, whatever they may be, be it information, money. Why I'm going should not concern us, but what you could do for the group could be something that could definitely concern you. This power that Rosta has to conjure the dead, to speak with them, learn their secrets, could be of use to us, yes. I hear the barrows are dangerous. We have to know it's worth the trip. Any power that is best searched for in a difficult manner will definitely yield the most rewards. And when a situation where we know there could be something there, there's little reason we shouldn't grab it. This reasoning sounds good. While I do that, I take a dramatic drink from my mug. Mm while holding eye contact. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. I definitely, like, yeah, I definitely, like, get the impression that I, like, I give you the impression that I'm like, okay, I'll go along with your story. I know there's something else going on here, but I don't care. Like, I'm in. Let's do it. Will three of us be enough, though? I think Karthak will come around. As you say I that, this... <laughs> oh, he's cute. <laughs> yeah, the door bursts open. So lightning dramatic. thunder. Yeah. From there. <laughs> From uh, next to the next to you guys at the table, uh, you hear a voice go, "So you're going to the Barrows?" <laughs> Who wants to know that? Uh, you turn and see like a five five and a half foot, uh, just normal looking human guy with a giant axe on his back. I would just start laughing. <laughs> Man, I like how much more of an asshole you are than you were last time, Veronica. I mean, <laughs> you ruined humans for me, Doctor. <laughs> you made me more distrustful than I was already. Uh, okay, so there's this guy with an axe. So I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna look over and be like, "And who are you, little man?" Well, they, they. Hold on, I gotta get, I gotta get the voice right. <laughs> I gotta channel something. I gotta get. Fuck, now I can't do the voice. I, gotta to, I was doing it perfectly all day. Uh, <laughs> it just sounds like Zanza when I try to do it. Uh, 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 they call me, they call me talk. Kind of lean back. And do you know how to use that axe? Do I know how to use this axe? Of course. I, uh, why would I have an axe on my back if I didn't know how to use it? He does have a point, Doctor. So I kind so of glance, I, do, do you guys know this guy? I no, but I don't know you, and I'm going to the barrows with you, apparently, so does that matter? That's a good point. It is. It's true. I'm going to slip back into Zandal so much with this voice, and it's going to piss me off. <laughs> I got to get, I gotta get mad at chat so I can imitate them. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, so talk, can you describe what you look like? Uh, yeah, I'm kind of a, it, I've got red hair, it's not really kept at all, uh, freckles, but you can't distinguish if they're, a, if there's a freckle or pimples, just like acne on my cheeks, mm -hmm. uh, kind of like a greasy forehead and a greasy nose, um, just like a normal shirt, kind of ruffled, uh, cutoffs on the, the arms, and then just okay. like some normal, normal pants with some shoes. So you look kind of like... Like a farmer who picked up an axe, basically. Yeah, the hence my Pretty question. much, yeah. yeah. Talk the normal. <laughs> I've got two hand yeah. axes on me and a couple javelins. Cool. Cool. And I'll send you my character sheet. And, uh, you know, like, as you guys are sitting, you know, getting to know this newcomer, like, do you have any particular reason for wanting to go to the Barrows talk? Uh, nope. I just want some friends. Mm. <laughs> Sweet. You find the good ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I guess this far out, we don't have a lot of choice, so we take what we can get. The weather, and I like look out the window, it's not, Boom. So, good. not so good for traveling, I think. Maybe we wait for tomorrow. 
dawn comes. Can we leave then? I kind of nod, look at talk, and great. that sounds good. Great. Let's that sounds great. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> cool. Wait. Can I stay with one of you for the night? No. <laughs> Come on over and talk. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> I just like, so dark, but I just want to hug you. I just stand. stand are, you're short, so I'm just like sitting next to you. But I'm pretty, I guess I'm maybe like a foot taller than you or something. And I just sit there and kind of like rock back and forth with my, I just have like normal appearance. Just rocking back and forth, staring at you, waiting for you to talk. Do you nice. need a drink? Uh, no, I can't. I can't drink right. No, I'm not of age. How old are you, Talk? I'm like 16. Oh my god. So you say that like not of age, and I just I look at you like, what is this of age? You're a man. You can wield an axe. You can take a life. You can drink. Barmaid. No, more. no, please, sir. No, nice. no, I don't. I, no. Yeah, I get a beer and I put it in front of you, and I'm like, no adventure till you drink. No, sir. I don't want to drink. Don't don't make me mad, please. You uh, talk. Did you want that place to sleep? I would listen to him. <laughs> listen yeah, to uh, him. Yeah, the the barmaid puts a mug of beer down in front of you. She says, "Go on, honey." Is is this how you make <laughs> friends? This is yes. exactly how you make friends. This is the only way to make friends. <laughs> well, I, and I just like grab the drink and like slowly sip it. While giving them all like eye contact, I'm just like, drink the yeah, whole I nod this sagely, <laughs> set yep. it down. Yep. Yes, good. <laughs> that? uh, that's good. Okay. Thank I you. I always get two beds. You can take one of those this evening. Okay. Excellent. That tastes really bad, but don't, don't ever drink that again. Take your medicine, little man. That's not so medicine. Let's see. Sheldrick, I think you need to spend ten gold pieces. <laughs> Wait for Mother what? God, this tavern. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> for exorbitant. It's for cost of living over time. Uh, Varani needs to spend three, and uh, do I even have Gregory that? Gregory needs to spend three as well. Uh, okay. You can actually yeah. spend less. You're Steve. just not going to have lived a very nice lifestyle. Yeah. Steve, what? Oh, oh, game mastermind. Right. Uh, how much cash did I get for those? Hawk Knight tapestries. Oh, let me look them up. Because as much as I would love to just have them hanging up in my room at the inn, <laughs> I'll make some money off that shit. I think that's fair. Uh, that's chat, by the way, if I randomly mute and you guys don't, you see me talking but you can't hear it, it's because I'm reading what you're saying and trying to get the voice back. Because <laughs> 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 I'm slipping way too much into fucking Zanzel for some reason. Alright, hang on. I need to search through my... Documentos. Love d'art. <laughs> Did we get any money from last time? Is there any loot aside from the tapestries? Uh, uh, I think you guys split up some. Did. No, we didn't split it up. I haven't. Okay. Um, <laughs> well. <laughs> and I, I'll say I'll mention that. I'll be like, yes, I have the purse from the woman that we met, the worm cultist. It's fifty <laughs> gold. I'm holding on to it. Yeah, I think uh, each tapestry was worth 25 gold, so you had three, right? Shit, yeah, I had three. I'm yep. rich as balls. Yep. Okay, cool. Um, okay, uh, I want to, sometime before we leave, I want to spend some of that money, because I think I've, I've 100, 128 now. Yeah. Um, so I want to pay a visit to, mm, okay, I'm gonna, I'll put it to the party. So... Because if we spend some of the party gold, we can do this too. Um, so there are there are some merchants in town looking to start the business. Uh, potion maker, woman named Salt. And there's a man named Mickelson trying to build a AIDS guild. Someone we could bring along to carry torches, carry bags. Those tapestries I brought back were hell on my back. I'd like to give someone silver to carry it for me. So if we you, gather you up, should, our... you should buy supplies. I have plenty of supplies. No, just get them. <laughs> we need we need supplies for the group. Yes, we can do that. But if we give money to these people, they can start a business. We can get better supplies later. Uh, so, what do you think? Should we 
invest this money or just Are they to be trusted? Where do you know them from? Well, that's the question. We would have to talk to them. I, I'm not about to just give away money. I feel like this would be, uh, how they say, uh, controlling shares in business. I guess he can't wait to talk to them. I have some uh, bad news, friend. I uh, I might have lost all of my money up until this point. That last ten I spent was actually everything I had. Ah, good time to go adventuring then. No more doubt that. No more doubt. Like desperation. Sheldrick is actually a compulsive gambler. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. Uh, supplies. Just uh, just get some supplies. It's good. Yes, little man, we get to that. Right? Yeah, so, so like, you guys have the rest of the day to sort of prep for the journey. So what is it you'd like to be doing? So, out of out of character, do we want to, yeah, which, do you guys want to do that? Do you want to spend some money so we can open up the potion store for a few I episodes? personally don't have much money. If I owe the tavern, like, three, then I'm down to two. Okay, I got lots, and we have we have loot from last time. Like we got a chest with. Yeah, like, but you kind of stole that from everyone. No, no, there's. <laughs> there's <laughs> steal it! Look, I'm trying to reinvest. We've got gems. We got a shit ton of copper and silver, and there was some gold from the the cock knight's castle, and that's around. So. Um, plus, well, we can sell that plate mail. We can sell one of these three horses we have. True. We have liquid assets here that need tossing around. Um, or I mean, or I we could we just hang it. Too. Yeah. Nah, I, think so. I mean, wh how? Why would we? <laughs> okay. JP, Co, you guys feel like that's good? I mean, I'll just throw the money I have. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I don't. Extra. It doesn't matter me. Okay. All right. Well, then, uh, anybody want to come with me to see the potion mistress? Supplies. <laughs> Should get them. I'd be happy to help. <laughs> okay. Sheldrick and I are gonna go and see uh, Elith Salt. Awesome. Yeah. So you head to the temple to the border wall and uh, you know push open the door. It's it's a it's a nice stone building sort of at the center of Veriscali. All of it is you know sort of carved and decorated to uh, oh who is it? Gods of Lorien. Um, To Vera. Yes. Yeah, so there's, uh, you know, lots of, like, images of cobblestone walls and, you know, yeah, divi dividing lines between sort of a blackness beyond and the greenness of, you know, sort of civilization. Uh, and all of these tapestries are woven with, a like, a bright red diagonal slash dividing the black and the green. Um, and, you know, there's, there's a couple of people in the room so before before we go in, uh, I'm gonna hold the door of the temple open for Sheldrick and be like, yeah. after you. Um, okay, and when when Sheldrick goes in, uh, I'm gonna like spit on the wall, and mm -hmm. and the cur like say some kind of like under my breath like some curse like may you fall and crumble, and yeah. then come in, and then I'm gonna go inside. Okay, that's a good curse. Thank you. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, Eleth is is at the altar praying to herself quietly. Um, but uh, as she hears you enter, she, she sort of glances behind because she knows that her her job is to sort of attend to the parish parishioners. So she sees you and she stands up and she approaches. Okay. She says, "I've got my well, holy symbol. I've got my holy symbol out now, so she can see it." Yeah, hearth, hearth fire of Rona. Yeah, she says, "Ah, the doctor. What can I do for you?" We have uh, money for you, priestess. I heard you were looking to uh, open a business. Oh, well, a business, I don't know that I would personally call it that. I, it's a service I could perform if I were given the freedom to acquire a little more knowledge in service of, of Veriscali, yes? Service in exchange for gold, yes? This is, this is business. Well, in exchange for the money necessary for the acquisition of, uh, yes. It's not worth <laughs> arguing over. I just want to be clear where my money is going. And I, like, take out the big fat coin purse and kind of, like, weigh it in my hand. Uh, she says, well, uh, by all means, uh, come with me if you'd like to discuss what I have, the proposal that I have. Uh, look. Sheldrick, yes? So is she, is she standing in front of us right now or walking to the back room? 
Yeah, she's she's sort of leading you ahead, but she turns back. She says, you know, Sheldrick, yes? That's absolutely fine. And then she kind of keeps going. So I put my hand on my buddy here and I kind of go, so how much is that all of our money you're offering her right now? Not all. A lot, but not all. We should see if we can leverage the ability to talk to the dead with her. I feel like, and so we're having this like private conversation away from him. Like, I feel like this kind of priestess, not so good with speaking to the dead. Uh, they prefer to let them lie, one thing at a time. Sounds good. Hmm. Yeah. So, you know, she reaches her door, opens it, and she just enters into like a small stone uh, sort of. It's almost like a cloister room where there's just, you know, like a, a, a desk against the wall with a, a low candle. She brings in a candle from outside and lights it and places it back out in the, in the room. Um, she says, you know, yes, uh, please have a seat. She pulls up two chairs and says, well, um, I, I'm not... You, yes, thank you for, for your interest uh, in, in service to Hevera. I would like to study herbology, and I've been pursuing my studies independently, but I'd like to hire on an additional scribe for the temple to help reduce the workload, uh, allowing me to travel a little bit around the Ellen Plains and study the herbs found nearby. If I had a small investment, then I'd be able to make the hire and de dedicate more of my time to studying herbs and alchemy. Yes, I like this word, investment. So we give you gold, you study, you make potions, what do we get? Oh, well, you get uh, the sense of accomplishment of helping build a community and, you know, serve the wonderful people of Veriscali. I cannot knit my friends back together with sense of accomplishment. Sheldrick is laughing a little bit at this point and kind of just goes, no, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> she says, well, I, I certainly could provide potions for you, of course. And in exchange for these potions, I assume a cost as well, on top of what we give you now? Yes. How about this? We give you gold, you study, you make potions. You give us some free potions first, then we talk about paying you for more. She sort of sighs and says, well, without your aid, I would never have the opportunity to have these studies, so it, it seems if that's the deal you wish to strike, then yes, I could, I could perhaps offer you uh, a pair of healing potions to get started. I'm gonna kind of dramatically look at Childrick like, what do we think of this offer? So I kind of look back at him, I look at her, and I look back at him and I say, we can probably do better with three. Uh, and she she just spreads her hands and says, "My friends, I'm I, I'm sorry. Uh, living costs money, and unfortunately, I I need to supply myself." I don't like we being could get by with this. I don't like being stonewalled by this priestess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you want to do you want to try and roll a persuade check to see if you can? Uh, yeah, I'd like really to. twist the knife. I mean, I, well, well, we'll get to that later. Um, yeah. I kind of want to, I kind of want to feign walking out and see what reaction we get. I think that. that's part of, yeah, I think that's part of the role. Like, I think, I, yeah. yeah, that's a good call where we're just like, oh, well, you know what? I guess we could just go find another alchemist. Exactly. Sorry. <laughs> like, yep. yeah, um, go ahead. What's uh, your, if you, if what's you your, want. What's your persuade, uh, Sheldrick? Not good, I don't... Oh, well, actually, hold on. Uh, which which modifier? Is that my charisma modifier? Uh, it'll I have be... persuasion checked with a two modifier. Okay, cool. I got a plus three um, for mine. So if you want to... Do you want to roll to help me, and then I'll have advantage on mine? Sure, absolutely. Um, yeah. I'm not sure how that's done, but sounds great. <laughs> Just give me, give me a skill roll, Co. That'd be one... Which one would that be? It'd be 1d20 plus your uh, your persuade modifier. Perfect, which would be two in this case, right? For the yep. charisma bonus? Okay, mm -hmm. great. There we go. 
Oh! Okay, you do not get it yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Starting off with a bang, I see. Shadow nice. is just like, he just like turns his back and just leaves. He doesn't, he doesn't do anything about it. He's just like, well, okay, and then he just leaves. Okay, yeah, so I'll, I'll say to her, I'll be like, listen, my friend, he's very straightforward, doesn't understand the way that these things work. Civilized folk like us, we can talk about this, yes? You have to understand that this money represents hard work, toil, blood, and we do not want to spill more if we do not have to. And she besides... She sort of pauses and says, yes, speaking of blood, you should let Sheldrick know that when he's ready to inter the bones of his brother, he can... He can come to me. That's a service I do offer, at no cost. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say to her, like, I believe the dwarves have their own gods. They right. kind of scowl a little, like, hey, back off, lady. So I'm trying to culturally appropriate my friend. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then I'll, I'll redirect the conversation back to, like, okay, look, let's talk business, honey. Mm -hmm. uh, and let's see how it goes. Okay. Yeah, she says, uh... Yes, well, give me a moment to look in my Dungeon Master's Guide for what else I could offer. <laughs> um, she can't offer you three healing potions. It's, it's too much of a cost for her to, to front, but she's, she's looking, she sort of opens one of her notebooks and starts uh, thumbing through them to see what other sort of recipes she's learned and like where she could scrimp on costs in order to get you something that would help you know, convince you to make the investment. Sweeten the deal a little. Yeah. Hmm. I am out of the room at this point, right? I'm waiting outside, I'm assuming? <laughs> yeah, you've just left. Okay. We can uh, we can come back to it if you want. I mean, this is pretty much like end of scene for me if we get a if there's a deal, right? Yeah, yeah. She she ends up figuring out some kind of she 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 doesn't offer you another healing potion, but she's she says she can provide you another item. Cool. You know, maybe. Uh, um, <laughs> I I think that once once Sheldrick is out of the room, um, she's looking at her supplies and her her book. And she like flips past a page that catches your eye, and it says mm -hmm. "potion of poison" on top. Oh fuck yes, I'm all over that. And, and especially it, if it looks like a healing potion. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> and so uh, you know, she just sort of like flips past it, and then she looks back at you and flips back to it and says, "What about something like this? What about something like this? All right, I like this lady. Okay, cool. I'm in." Um, she she ends up negotiating with you that you have to keep this on the down low. You can't let anybody else know that she's giving you this potion or that uh, she's making this extreme of a deal with you. She doesn't want her business yeah, reputation. Yeah, no worries. No, and this, if anything, her willingness to go like get a little weird and dark on me uh, it makes me like her more. I could yeah. see this. Yeah, cool. I'm in. Okay. Good. Awesome. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, she says, uh, "Give me." Uh, give me six days, and when I'm back in town, I'll know much more about brewing and alchemy and be able to help you in any future travels. Okay. So let's see. That's going to be I give her the 24th. The, okay. I give her the 150 gold to open her business. Yeah, great. She, she pockets it gratefully and bows and says a small blessing to Rona under her breath. I ignore it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks anyway. So Varani, what are you doing in the meantime? I'm just staring down the human boy. <laughs> Not uh, saying a single him? word. I'm just staring at him. After how I how do you say do you just stare? Do you let how much time do you let pass? Do you just keep staring no matter what? I'm just keep on staring. I assume you will be talking to me. Yeah, well, that's why I'm just wondering, yeah. like, how much time can pass before uh, I have to say something. I mean, you can try, depending on what you say. I might answer. Okay. Uh. So, like, as you're sitting, probably like 30, 40 seconds pass. I'm just like, uh, are you a, are you a grill? 
I'm a dragon. A grill. a grill dragon or a boy dragon? I'm dangerous. That's all what you need to know. I'm dangerous. That's all you gotta know. You good at making friends, at man? Are you? Well, I made two already. Hmm. I guess we'll just have to journey together and hate each other. Um, Frelka comes over, uh, you know, big sort of beefy guy, round belly. Um, he's got like a close trimmed beard, uh, sort of on his kind of boyish cheeks. And he, he places another mug of ale down in front of Varani. says, this one's on the house, Varani. Looks like you could use it. And then he just looks Thank over. Thank you very much. <laughs> I can indeed. And I also stare down at the little human man. Uh... As he's like staring at me, I'm just like, yeah, keep those coming, big guy. Yeah. <laughs> mm. He he looks back at you. He says, "You're underage." He just goes <laughs> too far. Uh, as he leaves, I kind of just like, I guess actually, I uh, what's it? Is it a? I don't even know. What, I basically blow my tongue at him. Whatever that's called. A raspberry. A raspberry. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I I raspberry him. God, that sounds weird. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> 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 and uh, I turn back, and I turn, I turn back to Verani. I'm just like, uh, "Milady, you want another drink?" <laughs> yeah, I'll Frelka's stare at him for like, like ten seconds, and uh, I will get up and go to other people. I just <laughs> <laughs> okay, taking my okay. drink with me. Um, so you all eventually spend the night, and uh, the night is dark and stormy as was the day. Um, yeah. The, the next morning, it's not thundering regularly, or it's not thunder showering regularly, but there are still heavy clouds hanging in the air. Um, and every once in a while, a peal of thunder rolls across the plains. Uh, I, I'm assuming there wasn't anything else you guys wanted to do. Uh, I mean, probably just buy, like, I mean, the kid is annoying and stuff, but he had a point. Like, we should get food and stuff for the trip. Yeah. Um, so, let's see. Um... One day's rations are, let's see, that's five silver pieces. So for a gold piece, you get two days' worth of rations. Um, what else are you interested in buying? Torches? Well, so we are, the, only, the only person we had with us that knew where the, like, uh, Sheldrick, you haven't been to the Barrows before, right? Your no. brother died no, somewhere else. I heard a rumor. That's correct. I heard a rumor. Read a but notice. Ker but Kurthak has. Kurthak knows where, so... I don't think Kurthak has been to the Barrows. Oh, he hasn't? Okay. So I just we know, know that's where Gilly died. That's all I know. Yep. Okay, we, so we generally know where they are. Mm hmm. Hmm. Okay. Uh, what do you guys think for, like, food wise? How much stuff should we get? We have a cart now, so there's that. Oh, that helps. Like, word around town is there about a day to the south. Oh, okay. Um, and then we need time, like, goofing around in there. Um, yep. There's four of us, so four times, let's say, like, how long do we want to be in the barrows before we t decide to, like, turn around and come home? Five days? That's that great. That I'd good. Say. Depends on what we're finding there, yeah. Okay, so, like, 20 days of rations, and that's, how much gold would that be, Steven? That would be 10 gold. Okay. Uh, cool. Well, let's do that. Great. All right, so I have 18 gold in the petty cash, um, but I don't know I don't know what the like party stores are, but that's fine. Um, that all be with Kurthak. Okay, cool. Uh, well, I don't need, we don't need to go and bug him for money right now. Um, okay, cool. So we have 20 days of rations. Um, I have torches already. I have torches and candles and a tinderbox. Oh, I also have 10 days of rations on my own. Wicked. Um, Varani and Shaldrick and Tack, do you guys have? rations and torches and stuff from your starting equipment? I have whatever is in an explorer's pack. Okay. Yep. That's on page I 151, have... by the way, JP. Okay. I still have uh, eight rations myself. Solid, okay. I don't think I have anything. Oh, okay. well, well you I have an mean... explorer's pack too, but that's... Yeah, and it, yeah. it has rations in it. It has okay. 10, okay. 10 so, days yeah. of rations. So we've all got stuff yeah. for ourselves. Um, maybe we don't need to buy extra rations then. I think we're ready to go. I think we can just head out. Okay, good. Um, I also noticed... Oh, no, I do have one more errand that I want to run. Are there any pig farms around here? 
Uh, yeah, there's a pig farmer on the outskirts of Veriscali. All right, I want to go out there and I want to buy a pig from this dude. I want to buy a pig and a, like a rope leash for this pig. Yep, it's three gold pieces. Please okay. tell me you're bringing us bacon. I was about uh, so, to say, is that is it yeah. happening? Are we so having bacon? Plan. Yeah, so I come back with this pig, uh, at, at, like, because, I don't know, maybe we arranged to meet at, like, the town square or whatever at a certain time, and yeah, I just come back with this, like, pig on a leash. Shadow just smiles ear to ear. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking also, at the pig, looking back at the doctor, and I'm asking, uh, is this pet or food? This is money waiting to happen. So in Barrows, I am hearing that there are special mushrooms. There's a witch around here who will buy these mushrooms from us. And pigs, good at finding mushrooms. So we take the pig into the Barrows. Pig finds us mushrooms. We kill and eat pig. We come back and we make tons of money. That's like a win-win-win situation. He's right. <laughs> I Doctor totally has a good plan. Um, Dr. Grigori, what's your religion score like? My religion score is uh, plus something. Um, because these character sheets are weird, I have to copy and paste it into another field. Uh, plus one. Hmm. Okay. Um, would you like to do a quick religion check for me? I would love to. Like, you know, you're going to go find a, uh, a shrine yeah. to Rosta. Yeah, yeah so... Rusta is the Lord of the Fall, which is not just autumn, but also death uh, yeah. and the underworld. And um, it's common for uh, villagers who worship Rusta to make sacrifices at shrines, you know, ostensibly like the one that you're going to, of uh, either pigs or generally goats are the right. specific okay. creatures that are sacrificed. So Excellent. If that, like, if your objective is to go to the shrine of Rusta and, you know, get... get <laughs> Get the ability to speak to the dead at it. Like, that trips something in Gregory's brain that says mm, it stuff. might be valuable to have something. I mentioned that to, uh, to talk, Verani and, and Childrick. I say, um, well, we also like bacon. So, too, does Lord of the Full. So, if we need a sacrifice, and I, like, pat the pig's flank. So, one way or another. Is, is it, are you just talking to the two of us? I'm just mentioning it to the party. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I, uh, in a very low voice, say we also have this little human boy. If the pig, I, like I don't know. You. <laughs> no. Yeah, I, I'd love for you to eat me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. So, at this point, I pat is it talk on the back, and I kind of say, you know, thanks for dealing with me last night. So at this point, you guys probably should notice I got bags under my eyes. It doesn't look like I've slept at all. And I kind of look at the party and I say, this guy had to deal with me blubbering and crying and talking while I was sleeping all night. So I just want to say thanks for putting up with that. I'm sorry about that. Be nice to him, guys. Yeah, be, th thanks. Thank you, Shadrach. It's very nice of you. Uh, I, I, I like put my arm around him. Sheldrick, do you have Maldrick's body with you still? What have you done? I don't like what? to talk about it, <laughs> but I might. <laughs> you don't like to talk about the fact that you're just dragging your brother's corpse around. Well, I mean, he could be. How, long, how long ago did he die? Uh, uh, like two or three weeks. Is this a weekend at Bernie's type deal that's going on? Like, it, what? it is a slightly weekend at Bernie's kind of deal going on, yes. Okay. Well, I mean, two or three weeks, he'd be all like rotten and gross. You probably would yep. have wanted to like get all the flesh off. Like, you could be carrying around a bag of his bones or something. Well, uh, yeah, right. I was, I was going to say, well, I was thinking a very well sealed bag. That's where I spent a lot of my money on uh, to get a very uh, fine pot. Uh, actually, keep all contained because I did want to keep it all, but it's wrapped in a burlap sack. And I just kind of drag it behind me, kind of like right, one of those one of those bags that's designed by the Order of Hermes, the hermetically sealed bags. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably. But it's kind of got... funny because you all just notice that I'm kind of slowly dragging this, you know, bag on a three foot rope behind me, kind of wherever I go, and you hadn't really noticed it till then. And I just kind of, you know, don't, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. Just okay. you know. I'm I'm pull. imagining that you've got like some kind of harness that's like strapped to your back, and there's like a rope coming off of the back of the harness, like a climbing harness you've repurposed. And the bag is like soaked in like grease or pig fat or something like that to to help it seal up. But um, like wherever you were staying, like the the person that you were staying with um, has made well, it clear always, to you. It's that always they, outside. It's it's always what. 
Any anytime I go into a building, I put it outside in a bush. I, I make sure it's not anywhere, and it doesn't okay. smell too bad. So, like, do you maybe have like a, a hidey hole out in the plains, just like you know, a hundred feet outside of town that you are uh, that you you keep this bag? Whenever in? I'm sleeping at night, I do because I, I need to make sure it's protected. But if I if I'm wandering around town, I kind of stash it in different places. It's not on me most of the time. Only when I'm moving. Whenever I get yeah. somewhere, I yeah, kind of, okay. people don't even notice. I just kind of stuff it somewhere. Okay. And you're you're not like, hey, we should get a wheelbarrow. You just literally want to drag this bag along behind you. I do my best to make it very not obvious. Yes, it, it would be hard to notice. <laughs> very. I do my best. Okay. Hey, you guys um, notice until today, so I'm doing okay, clearly. <laughs> yeah, hate, hate the living, love the dead. All right, so you guys have a general sense of where the Harlood Barrows are. They're about a day to the south of, uh, of Veriscali. And um, are you guys just going to set off? Uh, there's no road that leads straight there. You would need to, if, if you wanted to walk along roads, you'd have to go sort of east towards the north uh, Ellen Plains and then south towards the pool and then leave from there. Okay, but, if, uh, there's, if there's no road, um, we'll have to leave the horses behind, right? Like, you could bring them. I mean, if you're just talking about the horses themselves, no, horses would be fine off-road. But if Yeah, the, it's, cart, yeah the cart. The uh, cart would probably bring you down to half speed off-road. Yeah, we're not in any hurry, are we? Anybody? No? no I mean, your, brother, your, brother's you gonna, your... your brother's going to stay dead, and Rasta's not going anywhere, so. Okay, I, mean, I say we walk then. All right, so you guys set out, and uh, you know it's it's still very overcast, very threatening. It's like an an early summer storm kind of day, but there's no actual rain coming down. Uh, there's a, a a brisk wind that whips across the plains and thrashes the the grasses against each other, and like you you notice that like the color palette is very somber. Like the grasses are all like the dark, rich green of um, summer, but it's all you know, lit with this gray sort of ochre light coming down through the thunder clouds that are boiling up overhead, and uh, you guys set off. Why don't we take a break here, and we'll come back and do some navigation rolls. Sounds great. We'll see you guys in just a bit for hour number two of West Marches. See you guys then.